So you want to learn how to do proper pressure game with Yoshimitsu. Now to understand how to pressure the opponent you have to understand if you still have the advantage against the opponent or in this case is it still your turn when you're using your attack right after. So as an example let's say if I were to use my standing one. Standing one on hit is plus eight. So if I were to then use that move and they attempted to attack me right afterwards I can launch him if I wanted to now just because that I can launch him doesn't mean that that's exactly the reason why I launched him you have to understand why it is that I can launch him when I use my down forward 2 and they ended up going for their standing 1 which is 10 frames the reason why that is if you understand frame data is that my standing one is eight frames at advantage on hit and they had to then recover eight frames my down forward two in this case has a startup of 15 frames so if you were to do a little bit of math which this is how i try to articulate exactly if i have the advantage against the opponent or if i don't is that if they are minus eight and i'm plus eight in the situation and I use a 15 frame on startup move then I essentially just deduct or subtract from the 15 frames with the 8 and what do I get from there essentially I get 7 so essentially the move turns into a 7 frame move that I can use in their case if they use a standing 1 which is 10 frames and they are recovering from 8 frames from that move that turns their 10 frame move into an 18 frame move with the mass whatever the shortest number is is the fastest move that will hit the target first now that doesn't mean that specifically that whatever move you use against the opponent will make your move faster it just means that they have to recover more frames than you do and since you have the advantage that means that you recovered quicker comparatively to the opponent that you're fighting against you that's all that really matters when it comes to overall understanding how to properly pressure the opponent. If you understand frame data, you have an easy time pressuring the opponent with a lot of moves where they have to constantly make guesses if it's still their turn. I've already talked about frame traps in the game. On my channel, there's a video that's up there that showcases some of the moves that you can frame trap with. And pressuring your opponent is a form of frame trapping. So as an example, I already mentioned moves like 3-1. 3 1 is plus 7 on block. Using flee into 4 2 is plus 7 on block. And while you're in dragonfly stance using 4 2, you're also plus 7 on block. So, what this means again is that if you're in this state where you essentially can then bombard the opponent into a move that they end up blocking and you have the massive advantage, then this means depending on the stance that you're in or move that you're using, if it's faster than whatever move they may use afterwards, you'll end up beating them. This is a form of pressure against the opponent since they have to then guess if it's still their turn to then attack. So enough of the ramblings, I'm then going to now showcase some of the moves that you can use with Yoshimitsu to try to apply some level of pressure. I'll try to articulate exactly what I mean when I say something so that way you have an understanding that if you do certain moves or certain strings that you may have many options that you can use with Yoshimitsu so that way you can get a better understanding as to how you can pressure with Yoshimitsu overall so starting off I already demonstrated that standing one is plus eight on hit on block is plus one so since you have the advantage already at that moment either on hit or on block this is where you have to think as to what you should be doing right afterwards so if they try pressing any buttons against you on hit you can hit them back If they end up blocking it, since you're plus one, you can still interrupt them. Now, a little slower there, but you can still interrupt them before they hit you. As you see, you can use down forward three one. Down forward three one is plus four on hit. So if they do try to retaliate in some way to quickly hit you back, you can use your down forward four if you're close enough. You can use your down forward one as well to stop them in place. 
you can use your back two as well. Or even try to attempting to go for your full crouch down forward four. Or even your samurai cutter if you can close. You can use your poison breath as well. Though you don't have the advantage, but since they're slightly far away from you, and since you're placed in a weirdly crouching position when doing this, so meaning you can actually duck highs. So if they end up attempting to go for a high of some sort, you can catch them off guard. And then just use one of these moves if you want to, then go for your poison breath if you get close enough. So this means that you have a lot of means to apply pressure. As long as the move isn't too slow to where the active four frames that you have as an advantage doesn't get used incorrectly. Meaning, if you were to use, let's say, down forward three into one, and they attempt to attack you, and let's say you go for CD1, they will just block it. Or they'll just simply attack you first before they even attempt to launch him with CD1. But that doesn't mean that you're done with down forward 3 1. You still have other options. When using down forward 3 1, if the opponent blocks it, you're minus 9. So that means you lose your turn, and then you have to only either guess if they're going to attack you and properly block it at this point. So you have other options you can use with down forward 3 1. You can use also while they're blocking the move, if you condition them on block since it's minus 9 and then you can block the incoming move. But if you hold the move, the 1 that is, it becomes an unblockable. And you're still plus 4 on hit on that. So that means you can continue applying pressure with your other moves like I just mentioned to catch them off guard. Now another neat trick is that if you're using down forward 3 and you don't attack with your 1, you also have the opportunity to use your other weird moves you can use as well. So as an example, by using down forward 3, you're put into a situation where you're actually crouching. So if you're crouching in this weird move, you can do moves like this. You can do wall standing 4. You can do wall standing 1. You can do wall standing 2. Or even wall standing 3. Now the reason why that is is because for some reason when you're using down forward 3, you're placed in a, a quick crouching state. So you can do other moves while you're in your crouching position. So that includes doing your wall standing moves. But this also means you can do stuff like this. You can do moves like that. Or even your full crouch down forward 4 as well. Or a dig jab if you want to use a dig jab instead, which is your fastest move you can use while crouching. Meaning you have a lot of opportunities to use other moves against the opponent. You just don't have to only use simply your down forward 3 into 1. Or just charging it to then go into that. And mind you, if you do charge it for too long, they can step it. So don't do that. It's mostly to meme if you want to just meme the opponent. Then you have 2-1. 2-1 by itself isn't all that great. If they block it, it's minus 9, so you're lose your turn and you have to then just block afterwards. Same thing on hit, if the first hit connects it's not a true string. The second hit ends up getting blocked. But if you condition them by doing this move many times in a match, you can then use this particular cancel you can use with 2-1. With so you can do 2-1 and by holding back you actually cancel out of the move. So by canceling out of the move you have other tricks you can use against the opponent. Mind you, if you do use 2 into back 1 to cancel out of the move, they can still hit you. Either on hit or on block, it's not safe. But you can still block right afterwards. But if you press buttons, then you get hit. But most opponents won't press buttons against you because they don't know what you're trying to go for. That's why you mix up with moves like 2-1 to see whether or not if they will press buttons against you to try to interrupt you. So you can use this opportunity to then try to trick them that you're not going to go for the final hit and to go for the cancel. And here you can then go for, let's say, 1-1 one, one, if you want to be safe. You can go for down forward 1 or down forward 1 into 2 as well if you want to. You can even go for down forward 1 into 2 into back, or just say down back, 2-2s two to set up another type of pressure game mix-up that you can use with Yoshimitsu, which I'll go for next once I'm done with this one. So essentially you have many options. You can do this into Samurai Cutter. You can go into your Poison Breath. <laughs> so 
So these are just examples, but that varies exactly what you can do in the Oshimitsu. You have many opportunities to apply enough pressure against the opponent. They'll have to then make a proper guess if you're going to do it or not. If you do end up doing it and they make the proper read that you were going to cancel the move, they can interrupt you. But if they can't and they only assume that you're going to commit to the 2-1, to then they'll just be blocking, which gives you opportunities to then try to mix up with something to pressure them even more. Then you have 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two is a natural string, so you don't have to worry about them blocking the second hit. While you're using this move, you're plus 15, so you have enough advantage to do anything against them, really. Well, not really anything, but you have a lot of moves you can use, even slower cased moves you can use against them if they try pressing buttons. So for example, if you use 2-2, you can even go for CD1 if you wanted to. You can go for moves like, let's say, 2-2 into 4-4-4 to catch them off guard as well. And since you're in your no sword stance, you even have access to your other launching move you can use, which he can block, but it looks like this. Most cases they won't block it. It's not like an automatic block situation. It's just that the dummy can block it because of how it's set up. And if they block the move, that is, you're minus one. So you have opportunities to still land other shit that you want to use with Yoshimitsu, really. So as an example, you can go for Flash. Now, you may already know this, but if you don't, this is a really good setup. It's a very simple setup where you just end up using your 2-2. They end up blocking the last hit. You're minus one. You go for flash, which is only 8 frames on startup, 8 to 11 frames mostly, and if they press any buttons against you, they get launched. Now, that's not the case on all moves really, there are some moves that, where they can get away with not getting hit by flash, like in the case of Brian, if he wanted to go for orbital, he can maybe escape the move, as you see. So it is difficult if to try to bait them into something if you're playing against an opponent that knows what you're going to be doing next. But it doesn't end there. You can also attempt to go for other moves as well. For example, if you know for sure that they may end up going for a jab or some kind, you can still step them. See? Their fastest 10 frame move ends up getting beaten by a sidestep. Preferably stepping to your right. You can step to your left and still beat it, but it's not as good comparatively to your right side. At least if you're playing on the player one side, that is. And that's against Brian, so specifically you have to then train against all of the matchups in the game to see whether or not which side is better to step to. Most characters you can step to both sides and there's no problem, but with Brian, from my testing, it's 50-50 where you can step to the left, and other times it's just better to just step to the right. But there's another neat trick that I figured out that, or I really say figured out, I think players already know this, the higher level legacy or just in general players that are specialized with playing Yoshimitsu they know that they can do this already but for those that don't if you do 2-2 and you go into Kencho stance you can go into that stance and apply other mix-up options now I got hit there but this leads into something else that I want to showcase if you do 2-2 into Kencho and you move forward or just go in Kencho moving forward it has high crush only when you duck down, when you're bobbing your head da back down as you're moving, as you get back up, you still get hit. But if you bob it down, you actually manage to basically evade highs. So as an example, if you do 2-2 and they block it, and you go into Kencho stance instead of going to your no sword stance, see, you manage to evade the high. So this implicates a lot of things. You can vary the other moves you want to use while you're in Kencho stance. If you manage to evade the high, this means you can do stuff like this. You see? You can even launch your opponent if you're quick enough, that is. If you're not quick enough, then you may end up getting blocked instead. And since the move that I just used just now, back to 1 from Kanto stance, the last hit is minus, so you could get launched in return or just get hit by some move. So you lose your turn completely. But it is neat that you can use that as a point of reference to try to essentially mix up the opponent and apply more pressure. But there is one drawback. If you use 2-2, they can duck the last hit. So you gotta be careful when using 2-2. It's best to then try to use your other strings like 2-1 to stop them from attempting to duck uh, your moves, that is. 
Then you have moves like, like for example, your back ones. Not many Yoshimitsu players use back ones, and those that do don't really understand its strong suits when using it. And that is that if you use back one on hit, it's plus seven. So just like you're sending one, which is plus eight, it has a lot of advantage. So you can use this to mix up into other options like your down forward one, down forward four, down forward two, all the moves you want to use, like moves that have a lot of high crush. Stuff like this so you can catch the opponent off guard if you really wanted to. On block, it's also plus one, just like you're sending one. So you can still use this to your advantage and try to use this move to either go for, let's say, for example, back one into a one or back one into one one. And even though they block it, it's minus nine, but you know, you still manage to apply some level of pressure against the opponent. You can even go for back one into your down back threes immediately if you wanted to. Another thing that players don't really use with back ones is that you can also evade with back threes or back fours. So you can use this as a means to evade moves as well if you're unsure if they will block it or evade it or just duck it since it is a high. Now in the move that I was supposed to mention, which is your down forward 1 into 2, into your down back 2s. This move in itself has a bit of pressure game, where even though it's negative on block, if they don't know how to properly pressure you, or in this case if they don't know how to properly interrupt you, you can even lead them into other particular moves you can use against them. For example, let's say if you use down forward 1 into 2, into your back down back 2s, you can go into Samurai Cutter. If you're in your no sword stance, you can just use your full crash on 4-3 and launch them as well. Or any of your wolf sending moves as well since you are placed in a crouching state. But again, your are minus. So they can try to press buttons against you, but the likelihood that they may use moves like, let's say, a jab is unlikely because you are placed in a crouching state. So the most they can do is attempt to either launch you, which you can interrupt them by using a dig jab, or going with your other moves like your wall setting 4. But I would only take my bets on your dick jab instead. Don't use other moves as well because you may have a chance of getting hit off of your wall setting 4. Also, take advantage when you're using your heat engagers. Any of your heat engagers will put you at plus 17 when you end up hitting the opponent with your move. So you can use this opportunity to use a move to catch them off guard as well to apply more pressure. Now, I already have a video up that showcases how to do heat engagers and what type of moves you should be going for when you use your heat engagers to apply pressure against the opponent or mix up options with the opponent. So, if you want to, I'll link it onto the video's description so that way you can go to that video as well. So, I think I've already mentioned at least the majority of the moves that I know of, or at least that I thought of at the moment. So, if you guys that are more experienced with Yoshimitsu, that know how to play Yoshimitsu, can go to the comment section and write down some of the things that I may have missed with Yoshimitsu you can do and yeah to help out the, the newer players that are struggling with the game so what I'm gonna do now essentially is I'm gonna go into a regular game like I've done before with my other videos I think I'm gonna do this as a trend as whenever I'm explaining how to do things with Yoshimitsu I'll go into an actual game and try my best to apply the things that I've been mentioning because usually the things that I've just talked about are things that I apply on my own gameplay so I'll go into an online match and I'll showcase exactly how I end up playing with Yoshimitsu maybe you get an idea as to how I tend to play and what my mindset is going through
Alright, so I hope that what I had demonstrated into my gameplay online has somewhat downloaded into your minds so that you have an understanding exactly what I did in game and how I applied it. I understand that all the things that I've done isn't exactly perfect and you may still feel confused as to why I did certain things in the game or that oh I didn't explain this into the video or whatnot. Again, how I play with Yoshimitsu is different for other Yoshimitsu players and since I play more fundamentally I tend to rely heavily on the basics and only apply the more crazy stuff later down the line or when I feel that it's time to start using the crazy moves that he has in his kit to see if it somewhat applies some level of pressure against the target. Understand that when you're applying pressure it just determines whether or not if you still have the advantage against the opponent instead of just waiting for the opportunity to then attack. Everything that you do even from evasion or from attacking or from frame trapping or from grabbing anything in the game is a form of pressure. Applying that pressure is determined again if you still have the advantage during that hit. So I hope that this video has helped. If you like the video, give it a like, dislike if you want to, subscribe to receive more of my shit, and stay tuned for more.